This video is brought to you by Policy Genius, and I'll share with you more about them in just a minute. Now you are helping people essentially reverse um, autoimmune disease yeah. and yeah. become healthier, happier, whole human beings through nutrition. And you realized a long time ago that fixing the heart medically can only take you so far. Yeah, that's we, right. We have to fix something else. And what is that? Well, you got to fix, you know, why, for instance, you got heart disease in the first place. And um, I was taught, as all my colleagues were taught, that heart disease is kind of inevitable, that, you know, that's the leading cause of death for both men and women. It's inevitable for all of us? For, yeah, pretty much. That's what we At were taught. At some point. Yeah. And then even if you get it, let's say you get coronary artery disease, that the best we can do is slow it down mm -hmm. to slow the progression. And what I realized, thanks to Big Ed, who I talk about in all my books, who reversed his coronary artery disease. This is a man who had 100, he was 100 pounds overweight. He yeah, was, he was, yeah he, was, he was really overweight. He was late, late 40s. He had inoperable coronary artery disease. Everything was clogged up, wow. and, and this guy went. And so you went, you opened him up. You no, I, well, I, he had gone to six different centers in the United States wow. saying, do, you know, do something. And everybody who saw him said, uh, well, no, there's no place to do bypasses. There's no place to do stents because everything's clogged up. Have a nice day. And so the, this guy spent about six months doing this. And... Um, he went on a diet during this time, and he went to a health food store, and he bought a bunch of supplements, kind of willy-nilly, quite mm -hmm. frankly. And so when I met him, he was still a huge guy, he weighed 265 pounds, and he brings me his angiogram, the movie of his heart from Miami, Florida. And I look at it, and I go, you know, uh, I agree with everybody else. There's right. nothing I'm going to do for you. And he says, well, yeah, that's what everybody says, but here's the deal. You know, I've gone on this diet, I've lost 45 pounds in the last six months, and I've taken all these supplements, and, you know, maybe I did something in here, you know, and I'm scratching my professor. So the video was from six months prior? Prior. Wow, okay. And I said, well, good for you for losing weight, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I know, know what you did with those supplements. You made expensive urine, which I right, fully right. believed. And he said, well, you know, why don't we do another angiogram? You know, what would it hurt? So I go, yeah, don't get your hopes up. But okay, so this guy has cleaned out in six months' time half the blockages in his coronary arteries. Mm. You know, gone, shrunk. And you go, I've never seen this before. That, you know, that, that doesn't happen. Um, and so. This was what, after 30 years of doing this? After oh, yeah, 35 yeah, years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that doesn't happen. You know, come on, that's impossible. You don't clean things out. The only way to clean it out is through surgery. Right. Yeah. Or put a stent in. Wow. So uh, let me give you an example. And this is kind of off the subject. And, um, so if you work out with weights and you happen to wear a wet wedding ring uh -huh. or an aura ring, you get calluses, right? Yes. So calluses are your body's response to protecting itself against an irritation. And you build up layers mm -hmm. and layers <clears throat> and, yes. uh, right? So it turns out that these plaques inside arteries is a response to an irritation. Mm. And you build up calluses. calluses. Yeah. And think about it, if I took off this ring and started working out with weights, uh, this callus would go away mm. because there's no longer any irritation. And what Big Ed showed me was he had removed the irritation mm. so he no longer needed calluses so and it starts his heart it, started to heal and it literally goes away and so that's what i've been doing for the last 20 years is teaching people how to remove the irritation to the inside of their blood vessels and the calluses miraculously go away they don't miraculously go away. You don't need them anymore. Right. Jacqueline used to have this expression is that if it tastes good, spit it out. Mm -hmm. He actually meant that you should not be eating for this two inch by three inch piece of muscle, your tongue, but you should be eating for the microbiome, for the yeah. bacteria. And 
all the other cute little viruses that actually live in your gut, live in your mouth, live on your skin. And if you eat for them, they will take care of you because mm. you are actually their home. This is a quick reminder that life can change at any second. And I've seen this happen so many times in my life, whether it's been a happy and exciting change or a change that tested my strength and perseverance. Now, either way, these changes have shown me that sometimes things happen that we just can't control. But what we can control is how we prepare and how we react to situations. And I'm well aware that something could happen to me at any moment which is why it's so important for me to know that if some unfortunate event did occur right now, my loved ones would be covered. If there's someone who relies on you for financial support, whether it's a child, an aging parent, or even a business partner, you need life insurance. And luckily, Policy Genius, the sponsor of this video, makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. And you could save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. And getting started is super easy. First, head right over to policygenius.com slash Lewis Howes. In minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. And once you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and scheduling all for free. The licensed experts at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance companies, so you can trust them to help you navigate every step of the shopping and buying process. Head to policygenius.com slash Lewis House to get started right now. Policy Genius. When it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. We're merely a condominium for bugs. And, and how many bugs do we have on our body or in so, us? Yeah, we have time? well over a hundred trillion uh, bacteria. And since the Human Microbiome Project was, you know, finished about five years ago now, I mean, we didn't know that these guys really existed. Um, in fact, Dr. David uh, Kessler, who was head of the FDA mm. in the Reagan years, who made the um, guidelines for the labels, the labeling laws on the back of packages that you know show saturated mm -hmm. fats and carbohydrates. And the labels, by the way, if we get into this, are completely wrong. Right. Um, they were forced on the Reagan administration by big food companies. Wow. And so anyhow, you, if you feed bacteria what they want to eat, and that's is all in the longevity paradox, they will take care of you. They will not, they'll take care of the wall, the lining of your gut, and they, you will not actually age, mm. which is kind of cool. So if you take care of, of them, the, of the bugs in your body, you will not age. Right. So you got a hundred wow. trillion bacteria. You have over 10,000 different species of bacteria. And just last year, they discovered another thousand, so who knows? Right. So 99% of the genetic material that exists in you and me is non-human genetic material. Wow. We're only, our genes are actually so unimportant, it's kind of humorous. <laughs> and when people take a family history, what they're actually finding out is if you if your parents taught you how to eat and most people's parents teach the kids how to eat and your parents had diabetes or your parents had high blood pressure or your parents had coronary artery disease and you eat like your parents did the odds are that you will do that right for two reasons the food choices that you made but more importantly you inherited your bacteria mm. from your parents and actually your siblings and so it's not the genes of your parents that mean you are susceptible to heart disease or um, alzheimer's or whatever right it's not the genes of your parents it's typically the the foods they ate that you're probably eating the exact same foods that cause the same type of problems correct yeah, right. I mean there are there's there is an Alzheimer's gene, and my 
program, according to Dale Bredesen, is the best way not to activate that gene. Um, and there are certain genes that people inherit that make the world's meanest, nastiest, stickiest cholesterol that most doctors don't even measure. And oh, by the way, if you're prescribed a statin drug, um, you know, a lipid-lowering drug, mm -hmm. it actually worsens the this other particle. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, there are genes, but they're such a small part. Uh, Nature Magazine had a big article in <clears throat> late 2018 uh, I think proving that only about seven or eight percent of what will happen to us is based on our genes and 97 or 98 percent of what's going to happen to us <clears throat> is based on our environment and our food choices yeah, our decisions our yeah. decisions yeah now you said we can you know Aging is essentially a choice is what I'm hearing you say, but if someone watching this saying well dr. Gundry You've got white hair. You look older than when you were 10 years old. So yes, how, how can <laughs> so how can how can you say that you're You can eat certain things that can reverse aging or can make you not age when you look older than when you were younger That's true. I I'm definitely chronologically older, but uh, recently on my uh, podcast uh, I had Dr. Terry Walls, who uh, I think is very famous, rightfully so, for uh, reversing her MS, her multiple wow. yeah, sclerosis. Uh, and she did it via diet. Uh, she did it initially by eating nine cups of vegetables a day. Mm. And uh, I, I dare people to try to eat nine cups of vegetables. It's a lot of fiber, right? It's a lot, <laughs> a lot of fiber. And, and we'll, we'll get back to fiber because I think that's probably the key. And this is actually what Jack Elaine was trying to say. If it tastes good, spit it out. And Terry became famous for telling people that uh, she, when you look in the toilet every morning, you should see a very large coiled snake looking back up at you. <laughs> and uh, in fact, in, in the plant paradox uh, in the, the original manuscript, I had said, when you look in the toilet, you should see a giant anaconda looking back <laughs> up at you. And my editor, uh, Julie Wills, you know, called me up, she said, uh, do you know there's a movie where yeah, an anaconda is coming, the toilet. Yeah, coming, out, <laughs> coming out of the toilet? And I said, oh, yeah. She said, I don't think we want that visual yeah, yeah. in your book. And she said, well, let's, let's take that out. <laughs> so, but what we didn't know, what you, you didn't know, I didn't know, is that that giant coiled snake is not the fiber and the roughage mm. that we ate. It's actually bacteria that have eaten the fiber. No way. And so bacteria inside of us? Oh, yeah. That's coming out. That's coming out. So most of your oh my poop gosh. is, if you will, baby bacteria. No way. And so the more... So we want to get the bacteria out of us? Well, no, you want them to grow and prosper. And the more they grow <laughs> and sounds prosper... sounds like aliens in our body. It's well, like you know, beauty you're, pots. You're absolutely right. And one of the things that is kind of hard to embrace is we we probably only exist as a place for bacteria to live on earth wow and and you know intelligence so if there was no bacteria inside of us we're done we would die so we know that we can breed germ-free mice and interesting fun fact that i put in the longevity paradox my fifth grade science project was to build a germ-free mouse environment. This was in 19, wow. 1960. Wow. Um, and so this isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> um, so, so we can build, we can raise germ-free mice that have no bacteria in them, have no bugs in them. And they live short lives. Really? They have horrible immune systems. They get and sick. They... they get sick, yeah. And they, so they're a basis of so much of what we know. And so you can, so bacteria are incredibly important. And we know now that these bacteria actually teach our immune system from day one. In fact, scary 
we used to think that the placenta, where the, you know, the baby, the womb, the uterus, that feeds the baby is sterile. Of course it has to be, because the baby has to be sterile. The placenta is full of bacteria. Feeding, feeding the baby. The baby. And it, it turns safe. out that the bacteria in the placenta actually give information to the baby's immune system before the baby even pops out of the womb. And so the we need these viruses, it, these we, good viruses. We need these viruses and bacteria. We need them. Hmm. And in, in fact, fun fact, long ago, the only way to treat bacterial infections were viruses that could actually infect bacteria and kill viruses. And Eli Lilly Company from Indianapolis got its start, this giant pharmaceutical company, as what's called a bacteriophage company. Bacteriophages are viruses that infect bacteria. And it turns out that viruses uh, actually are really useful in us as well. We have mm. trillions and trillions and trillions of viruses in us right now. What's the difference between a good virus and a bad virus? If the good virus is doing what it's supposed to do. Um, okay, let's, let's do a deep dive into microbiology. Okay, and what is the definition of virus? Okay, so a virus <clears throat> is probably the s smallest reproducible form of life, however we want to define life. <clears throat> so most living things are capable of reproducing themselves one way or another, mm. dividing or multiplying. multiplying one way or another. Just like humans. Exactly. So a virus, unfortunately, has to have, cannot replicate itself. It has to borrow another cell and tell, take over the cell's machinery to manufacture more copies of viruses. Mm. And that's how they get reproduced. But in the end, every living creature is here just to make a new copy. And you, know, you and I only, only exist uh, was to make a new copy. Wow. And, you know, I hopefully actually only exist so my bacteria can make new copies of them themselves. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a condominium yes. for my inhabitants. Duplication, yeah. And if, if they're happy and I'm a good landlord to them, they will keep the place nice. And yeah. they actually would like me to stick around a very long time because I'm their home. It's like a quadruple bad. threat for your body to gain weight. It goes back to what we're growing, right? So why are we eating all this food? That It's because that's the food we produce, mm -hmm. right? And so that's the other part of the problem. So we have the chronic disease, we have the economic impact, and then we're like, well, 